So let me talk about why they're laid out in this fashion. As I, I realize that I do have sort of odd shaped hands. I've got uh, kind of short fingers and wide knuckle base, which makes guitar playing easier and maybe makes this sort of drum pad playing a little easier. But just like anyone else, my middle finger is still my longest finger. And for that reason, I assign that finger to kick and snare. To sort of naturally get a, a harder velocity hit out of my middle finger. And then my index finger is on the hi-hat, because that's uh, generally the busiest of all the parts going on. And then I just can do a little bit of a cross step to get that choke with the kick drum. And the toms just sort of made sense to me to have on my third finger next to the kick and snare. I can also shift over just one column to get my first two fingers on all those toms. And these crash cymbals I generally would just play with my pinky. It's rare that I'll ever do a roll on any of those. So let's backtrack to why this choked crash is labeled multi. Uh, along with the, the first cell, which is the hi-hat multi, uh, it's labeled multi in for one reason, because I, as I showed you, it's got a velocity split going on. But both of these, the hi-hat and the choked crash, are also using this switch macro. So if I turn this switch up, the hi-hat cell is now a ride symbol. And the choke symbol is now the bell of that ride symbol. So what I normally do is I'll MIDI map this to the mod wheel. So let me set this real quick to channel 3 mod wheel 1, which is what I'm sending for my controller. So now I can switch between hi-hat and ride. You know, this is similar to playing the drums cross-handed with your right hand on the hi-hat versus open hand with your right hand on the right cymbal. So that does limit the amount of sounds I can have all at once, but um, it's a, it's a trade-off that I decided was worthwhile so that I could get the most out of having just eight pads. And the way that switch is set up has evolved a little bit over time. At first, all I was doing with that was switching the rack for the hi-hat on and off and switching the rack for the ride on and off. And I had the values inverted so that one would be on while the other was off and vice versa. And I would switch back and forth, switching the samplers on and off. But what I found was that that was cutting off the sound of any ringing hi-hat or ride when I would switch it. It was not a very natural sound at all. So what I've recently changed about this is now I've got a velocity device in front of each of those racks. And all this device is set up to do right now is not allow any MIDI notes through. So when that device is on, no MIDI gets through. So right now, no notes will get through to the hi-hat sampler. But the hi-hat sampler is still on, so any notes that were recently triggered will still ring. So as I switch that back and forth, so all I'm doing is gating out any new notes that arrive at the input of the sampler, as opposed to shutting this rack off, which originally I had done, and 
caused a little bit of trouble for me. Um, moving on, you may notice that that's a pretty deep rack there, but that's all based on the original trap kit standard device. I've got that nested in another rack called finger drums, so I can save that as its own preset. Partially that's because I've moved things around, but it's also because I've got some additional processing going on the drum kit. I've got a, a, um, sort of overbearing limiter here and a multiband compressor, give a pretty extreme raunchy drum sound. And now if you look at my channels up here, I've got an FM8 loaded up just as an example here. It's just a basic brass synth. Nothing, uh, nothing too special, but we're focused on the drums here, so we won't worry about the synth brass. You'll notice that channel 1, the finger drums, are set to listen to channel 10, because I've got my drum pads set to send on channel 10. Nice little Ableton feature here is if you open that menu up and you play some notes, you can see which channel is receiving MIDI. This channel 3 is the keys. So I've got FM8 set to channel 3. And what that allows me to do is play them simultaneously 